How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the OGs. The thumbnail's done, the overlay's done, so we can call it the OGs now, Turkish and Curtis. No longer, but we are here, so we're still longer, people. We're here, we're here, people. And um, big up, Curtis. Hey, it's been that like, over two weeks since we've done this, you know? It doesn't feel like that. Yeah, international break, madness, isn't it? Like, just a little break, but from now to the end of the season, it's just non-stop, man. I think we've got eight games this month. Yeah, sounds about right, because both Bayern games are this month. Yeah, Chelsea, Tottenham. This week. Yeah, by the yeah, end of the week, week, there's, yeah, there's, well, there's bare games. Bare games, bare games. Yeah, What yeah. are you saying, though? What was international break? What were you thinking? Uh, Happy like, actually, actually, we spoke on, on Supporters Club. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. I was like, I was waiting for the game yesterday. It's kind of come and gone, you know, and I'm kind of, I'm ha I'll be honest, I'm happier than I was at full time. At full time, I wasn't. I wasn't as happy as James was. Let me put it that <laughs> way. <laughs> Big up James every time, you know what I mean? But yeah, man, I'm calm now. You know, because all the other fans are, are angry with us. That kind of made me happier as well. I like that. Yeah, I know. You know, when James did that full time, yeah, I just thought to myself, yep, yeah, clipped 100% without a shadow <laughs> of a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, without a shadow. And I thought to myself, yeah. is this where I interject and, and you know, do the typical Turkish thing, or do I just let it flow? And I, I just, I just thought, you know what? Let me let it flow. Let me, let, let me let James flow. But I that, that, that no, right thing. that no context account that he doesn't let, let anyone flow, bro. He's out no. there ready to, yeah, ready to apply the pressure. And yeah, James yeah. is unfortunately on the getting the brunt of it on Twitter right now. But big yeah, up yeah, James, man. You yeah, know, the game is the game, bro. We've all been there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest, you've got to remember, James is a younger fan. There's younger fans yeah. out there. They haven't, you know, really... This is, this is. That was a big game. Yeah. If, I hadn't, if I hadn't ever seen Arsenal win a league or, like, been real part of seeing Arsenal win a league, like, going to games and actually watching, you know, week in, week out, yesterday would have been, a you know, a mega moment. It would have been yeah. a moment where it's, like, the realisation that Arsenal are actually... Uh, yeah. Be careful how I word this because then the the quick clapback will be, oh, but you haven't won anything yet. Yeah. But I think you can comfortably say that we are a top, top, top team, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, we're destined to win something. The, the, the probability okay. of us winning something, maybe not in eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, whenever the season's over. Maybe it's not this season, but this team is going to win something. And when I mean something, I don't just mean one thing and, and, and that's done, like a, you know, like a, whatever it is over the years, you know, we picked up an FA Cup and not built on it. It seemed like this team's primed to actually start. Win something, yeah. Do you remember in 98 when, like, obviously, we, we won the league and it was just, like, united and it's, you know, we've just come back into the the, the pinnacle of it all. Like I, I had heard mm. about Arsenal's history, the heritage. I'd, you know, seen clips and that at the time, you know, you'd have to be VHS and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But going yeah. into that era, it was a buzz. So I, so for younger fans, this must have felt like a big buzz yesterday. And you know what? I always have to like sort of think from other people's point of view and think if you're 25 or under, this is the mm. best. This is possibly, it's up there as one of the best league Arsenal teams that you've ever seen. Because let's be honest, if you're 25, we yeah. won the title 20 years ago. So you was five. You don't really remember that too much. Yeah. Outside of that, you haven't seen Arsenal win a league. We challenged a couple of times. But you're looking at this as one of the best teams you've ever seen as an Arsenal fan. So, you know, when James celebrates that, I get it. I'm sitting there going, come on, man. We'll tour to Old Trafford. This ain't nothing to <laughs> But yeah, to him, yeah. that's, that's a big result. Like, he's just seen us getting slapped every year against City. So... I, I get it, man. I get it. You just, you know, take and it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, like, to, to me, it didn't come across that celebration. It came across, I was there, so maybe it's different. It came across as relief more than anything. I, I get you. I get you. I yeah, get I saw it. it. Like, I saw it. You know, we got out of Etihad. We've got the point, you know, to be honest, it wasn't the greatest of games. It wasn't our best attacking performance by, you know, by some distance. Yeah. It felt like more like relief than celebration, but it is what it is. I don't know if I, was it really, 
I didn't feel relieved at the end. I was more like you. I felt like missed opportunity. I was happy with the point, but because that Trossard moment near the end, and, oh. and, it came, and it came so near the end that it was still very much within me, the feeling of, oh, that was the moment, even though the Haaland moment came after that one. And oh, yeah, to yeah. remind me, yeah, well, that. Haaland had his chance straight after. Yeah, I guess draw is the fair result. You know, the day after, I can yeah. I can say that. But at the time, it just felt like we could have won that. Uh, yeah, because I saw your AFTV interview, and um, I agree with a lot of what you said, and uh, especially about the ref as well. I, I thought the ref was all right, um, but when the game first finished, my my thing was. I kind of split the team in half. I thought defensively we were outstanding. Like that was like yeah. prime Jose. I'm going to stink out your ground. You ain't beating us and we'll try and nick something. And it worked. They couldn't like for City to have one shot on goal in 90 minutes. It was a Nathan Ake header from a corner. So in open play, they didn't have one shot on target. That's unheard of. Like Haaland yeah. got pocketed, De Bruyne, all of them. Foden didn't do anything. But then I just had this thing of like, when are you going to go to the Etihad and they've got no Kyle Walker, who's like the insurance policy of their team. He's the pace. No John Stones, who's the ball carrier. Ake comes off after 20 minutes, who has done really well against Saka in the past. And Edison's not playing, which I was surprised because Edison trained on the Friday, but Pep said he oh, wasn't yeah, yeah. 100%. So I think... I just felt like we could have got at them a little bit more. But then ultimately, I, when I've calmed down, I watched the extended highlights this morning. Sometimes doing the watching on, you don't see it properly. And I looked at the game and I thought, realistically, if Trossard gives that to Martinelli and he scores at the back post, which I think he would have, you're looking and saying that's an absolute masterclass. Simeone gets praised for that performance yeah. all the time in Europe. So you've gone there, you've stopped them creating anything, you've shut down their best players, you've nicked a good opportunity at the end, and you've won the game. We're sitting in now going, oh my God. Like, yeah. So I have to give the team a lot more credit when I've looked at it today. I think, you know, we we nullified them and we was missing Timber and Martinelli clearly wasn't fit. Saka was fatigued so and I think Partey as well you know he, he kind of offered yeah. us something else when he came on so I think it I think it's a positive result for us and then you saw Pep's reaction after the game you know he yeah. was vexed bro he's pulling up on man yo Grealish what are you doing Doku what kind of technique is that bro you can't even kick a ball <laughs> you know what I mean he was so, onto them <laughs> he was onto him he wasn't happy with that so I think yeah man I think it's about what we do in the coming weeks now against you know Tottenham United or them, or them. Yeah, yeah. If that was if that was the first leg of a of a Champions League knockout tie, quarterfinal, semi-finals, everyone's lauding it. Everyone's saying that's yeah. what you do away from home. You 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 get out of there with a draw. It's just because there's points on the line, and essentially the draw yeah. kind of makes Liverpool the winners of the weekend. That's yeah. where the whole oh we should have probably you know gone for it a little bit more. But I don't know, man, even with the whole Walker thing, like, you know, Walker isn't what he was. He's not. And I, I don't know, if Walker played, maybe there would have been more opportunity down his side because of how advanced he tends to play. Mm. Maybe there would have been that. Because in the game, most of our good opportunities, in the first half especially, more so came down their left-hand side than it did their yeah. right. So Kanji was pretty... You know, was pretty certain on his side, really. And then Trossard came on, caused some more problems. But then, really, he, he even he quietened down a little bit. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Like I think Stones would have changed how they play a hell of a lot. Um, or not how they play. Would he have? Because they still had all the possession, and is Stones yeah, no, really it. a guy to make a difference in the mid to attacking third? I don't think he is. No, I, I think. <laughs> Do you know what it is? It wasn't so... So I was looking at the game early and I was thinking because when when Ake came off, Vardio went to left-back and Rico Lewis went to right-back mm -hmm. and then they moved the Kanji next to um, Diaz. Yeah. So I was just thinking in my head like, oh, I wish Martinelli was fit because Rico Lewis can be got out. He's a good young player. He's brilliant on the ball, but defensively I still think... And when Martinelli came on, he didn't look fully fit. I reckon that injury was probably worse than what they said. Um, yeah. And I, listen, I, I, I've got no fault with the manager yesterday. I think he set up a plan. 
it wasn't going to make for a hugely entertaining game. Last year, we tried to go toe-to-toe and we got slapped. So there's no point. Go there, spoil the game, hit them on the break. And the Trossard thing that sometimes you go to Man City, you get one good chance. And that was the chance, you know. We had a couple of half chances with Jesus, but that was the big chance. And yeah, you, I think... Oh yeah, go on. Do you think... And obviously, no, I don't mean heavy recency bias in this as in the last game. I mean, this season, do you think we're a good team to watch? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I don't think we're as exciting as we was last season. La- but mm-hmm. last season, I think Arteta finished the season and thought, towards the end of the season, it was like, you score, we score, you know, Southampton, free all. And I think he thinks, you've always heard managers say, you know, defences win titles. I think he yeah. thought, we, this can't be a basketball game. You know, we need to be able to shut teams out and and stop them and win games 1-0 rather than trying to win 4-3 all the time. So I would say I think we're one of the best teams in the league to watch, to be honest. I think Liverpool are exciting because they yeah. they don't control the game as much as us. They're very like, it's very end-to-end, even against Brighton yesterday. But I, I think we're I think we're very yeah. good to watch. No, I know. I agree with you, and that's that, that. That is kind of my point because I, I think we're good to watch. But if we've got that in us, which by yeah. that I mean yesterday, which yeah. you can like you liken to maybe a Simeone, Atletico, Jose Mourinho in his prime. Yeah. If, if we can play good football generally and pull one of those out when we need to pull it out, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I do, listen. I don't care. Sometimes you have to win dirty. Sometimes you have to win rough. It kind of reminds me of. The United game during the Invincible season, you know, you, you know the um, the, the Van Nistelrooy missed penalty. Yeah, yeah, away from you our, know yeah. when you didn't have the greatest of games, but you got out of there. You you know yeah. you got out of there with what you need to get out of there with. Well, at that time, you know, and yeah. big scheme of things, you look back now, and you know it was part of a, a, a historical unbeaten run. Yeah. It felt like one of those, but obviously, all that matters now is what we do moving forward. That, that kind of kept us in the fight essentially or very much kept us in the fight because i don't think we would have been out of the fight if we had lost but yeah we, we would have made it hell of you know, hell a lot of difficult for ourselves if we did it's about yeah. what we do man we need to get six out of six now because i don't think liverpool city and arsenal win two out of two this week i just don't f- like it's just the, the odds that they all that we all win or yeah i don't see it so city have got villa and i don't know who they've got at the weekend Liverpool, quickly. Liverpool got Sheffield United and Man United, yeah. and we've we've got Brighton and Luton. Yeah, we've City. we've got to win both. Yeah. City, Villa, and um, Villa at home, Palace away. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Villa slapped them at their place. Just whether mm-hmm. whether they can do it away. I think. Uh, I mean, I was looking at earlier on the on the show that I did and the pros and cons. So. You know, I think we've done great. We've took eight points off those two in games, two away draws, two home wins, which I think is brilliant yeah. against your rivals. Um, what we've got to address, I was looking, the top 12 in the Premier League, we've only beaten one of them away from home this season. Yeah, I read that. West Ham, you know what I mean? We lost to Fulham. Uh, there was a few. We haven't yeah, played yeah. all of them, but yeah. obviously Villa, Newcastle, Drew to Chelsea, Drew to Liverpool, Drew to Man City. So I think for us to realistically win the league, we've got that's the bit we've got to fix. We've got to be able to beat Tottenham, beat United. Man United, beat Brighton. You know, there's nine games left. How many wins do you think it takes to win the league from from here? Probably seven or eight. Probably eight. Yeah, it could be eight, but I'm gonna say seven. I just think there's there's a few twists and turns to come, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think like we all go. I think that the, the the team that wins seven of nine wins the league probably. Yeah. Yeah. Two point. See, Liverpool are what three points ahead of City. Yeah, two two with us. So we got to make up two already, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. So we might need eight. Yeah, that's where it becomes a bit yeah sticky. It all like look if Liverpool pick up three points out of the next six it, it you know next week it's a different conversation again yeah yeah that's why this time of the year is mad we we you know we saw we saw it last year like one minute you're top by five points you you come into this business end of the season 
and two weeks there, you might be behind by six points because that's how many yeah. games come thick and fast. Like two, six points up for grabs. We can't even think about it yesterday too much. No, no, that's you dumb. Know? That's dumb, bro. You know? Liverpool, Sheffield, you know? even Palace away for City, I'm sure off the top of my head. Palace are, I won't say a bogey team, but they are kind of a... Yeah. I'm, I'm, am I going mad? I did the watch along for that game last year when we were in the title race. And I remember um, Elise gave away a penalty with like yeah, five late minutes. On. I was going mental. But yeah, yeah Palace got a good record. 2-2 um, two, two away last year. City have only won two of the last five against them, home and away. Mm. Selhurst, so, man's tough, tough ground to go to, isn't it? So yeah, hope, we're, we're, yeah. we got our hope. We got our hope. Our one's big because our one's Brighton. I don't want to look past that because Brighton is, as much as Brighton have been, you know, not maybe the Brighton we've known over the last couple of years in terms of consistency, they can still pull like they they gave they gave Liverpool a fight. They should have conceded, you know, probably five six goals, but they could have scored two three themselves. I mean, I hope it don't come back to bite me, but I just I think we're gonna beat Brighton. Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll beat them, and I think um we're comfy. Like, like maybe not comfy, like, but I just, you know, even against Liverpool, I looked yesterday, like, Mitoma's injured. Um, there's a Jao Pedro's injured. Yeah, he's not about, yeah. They're missing two or three key players. Um, but this, we, I think we slapped them last year, didn't we, when we went there? Beat them early in the season, didn't we? We did, yeah. Some Martinelli scored. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. We've we've got like you said, man. We have got to take six points this week. It's just no doubt. Brighton got this week. Brentford away. Okay, that's who they got coming up Wednesday. Yeah. I think that's not easy for them. No, it's not easy. Um, yeah, it was two 0 earlier this season, December. Yeah. Last season they had that victory, a couple of victories. Yeah, just Brighton have been one of those sides, but it's a tough place. Yeah, we expect to get the job done anyway. Yeah. We expect to get the job done. But I'm with you in terms of that performance. Half, You see when you mentioned half the team, defensively, I mean, I'd probably say the whole team done their bit, but obviously the defensive unit, like the, the core of it is Gabriel Saliba, Declan Rice. I think yeah. Ben White was probably our player of the half in the first half. I just mm. think Gabriel and Saliba probably overall overtook that. But Ben White, another one that should be mentioned. I think Kivio had a tough start. Yeah, got back into it, but I think the Tommy sub made made a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, I see Tommy yeah. getting, you know, some criticism. I don't think that's really Doku done him a couple of times, but he also he also held him up a couple of times. So, and it didn't yeah. cost us. But defensively, the core was was Saliba the clear man of the match for you. I probably would have given it to Gabriel, but yeah, Saliba. no, I I gave it to Gabriel because I thought Saliba. In the first half, on the ball a couple of times, he was a bit rocky on the ball. He gave the ball away a couple of times. Too long to pass a couple of times. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, City, City are a unique football team. Like, I was watching that game at times yesterday and I was like, they are, they are so difficult to play mm -hmm. against. Like, to beat them at their ground, especially, like, you've got to be on a, like, you've got to really hurt them when you're on the ball you know you've got to have so much confidence on the ball but um they keep the ball for so long that when they lose it they've got so much energy to go and win it back and you're tired because you've been chasing it for so long so now Saliba played well but yeah at the start he was shaky I think he's very calm in it yeah so when he was playing with that calmness like let me have a touch and look bro man's there straight away you ain't got that time today I, I thought Gabriel overtook him because I felt like he took over the Haaland situation from Saliba and he just, I feel like a year or two ago, Gabriel would have got booked in that game. He would have been a bit too much with it. He used to be a bit overly aggressive. Yeah. Now, now I feel like, you know, it's controlled aggression. He clearly was affecting Haaland. He had him rattled yeah. as well. I just yeah. thought, I actually think that was arguably Gabriel's best game in an Arsenal shirt. When you look at the guy he's up against, I thought he was yeah, outstanding. Yeah, flawless, really. Flawless. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Rob, Rob in the chat asked why he doesn't get his flowers. I just think modern day football fans just tend to look at the Rolls Royce type of defenders now more than mm. they do the rough, rugged. Whereas 15, 20 years ago, yeah. the rough, rugged ones are the ones kind of, you know, everyone wanted and everyone loved. And I think Gabriel's a bit of that. In my yeah. fan cam, I likened the 
Haaland's an old school striker. Gabriel's old school defender. Leave them to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I why I like. That's why I like your comments about the ref. I know Lee Judges was fuming about the ref, wasn't he? But yeah, I, I want to see a referee let things go in a big game. There's nothing worse than a ref in a big game stopping the game, foul, mm-hmm. yellow card. Do you know what I mean? Let the get. There was nothing overly dirty in that game. Nobody really put any nasty tackles in it. No. Now that Harlan Gabriel thing was just a good old school battle. Shook hands at the end of the game. Few words. I thought the ref, like, I thought he was all right. I thought he was. I thought he let the game flow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people agree that the the yellow card or to Jay Deuce one, but I just look at it as. You were trying to take the piss. Yeah. He caught you trying to take the piss, and he gave you a yellow card. Like I, yeah. I kind of get it, even yeah. though I'm like, oh, you don't have to do that. But it is what it is. Just leave it. Leave them to fight, bro. They like. Yeah, they, they like. It. Look at them at the end. Like there was words. There was a bit of love, hugs, whatever. Yeah, they enjoyed Proper that, football. man. That's what. That's what football was about, anyway. Now, yeah. not so much. But our attacking line, on the other hand, I don't know, yeah. man. I do feel Jesus. Is getting the brunt of criticism that's not warranted. Because I'll be honest, that Agreed. one, the 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 take his first chance, the takedown on the chest and the shot near post. Yeah, firstly, that's a difficult thing to do. I, I don't even think he got criticism for that. I think he was unlucky. Cool. Mm. He's more getting criticism for the one that first the older guard, in my opinion, fucked it. But we'll talk about that. But even if Jesus shot before he then took on the the four or five defenders again, which people are pissed off about. The chances of him scoring, they were still slim. He was still just outside the box. There were still three defenders in front of him. It's not like he, you know, he he skipped taking a clear shot on goal to bring drag it back and bring. It was still a very difficult chance. I agree, mm. he should have let left let it off sooner. Yeah. But he's getting the brunt of it. Whereas I feel like as a unit, the front four as a unit in an attacking sense, all round were poor, and that goes for Trossard coming on as well. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, I. I spoke about Jesus today. I think overall, like, I feel underwhelmed with that transfer. Um, Him and Zinchenko, if I'm being honest. When we signed them, I was like, look at the CV, look at the experience, you know, maybe we can get more out of them. I'm sitting here now, nearly at the end of their second season, and, you know, we've had lack of form from Jesus. Hasn't hasn't even it more. I think 11 goals is his record. Mm Mm-hmm. Three knee injuries, pulled his hamstring. Yeah, you know. So I'm, I'm now uh, next season. Jesus for me needs to be a squad player. That's a, mm-hmm. that's the second choice striker and the backup out wide. Um, and Zinchenko, I would honestly be open to offers for him in the summer with yeah, Tom, with Tommy Asu and Timber. And you know, I don't, I don't think you desperate. Kivior as well. I'm not sure. And even Tierney coming back. You never know. They might not be able to sell him. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but yeah, with Jesus getting the brunt of yesterday, I, I, I sat there at half time and a lot of people in the comments were criticizing him. I said, listen, I've got more of a problem with a player who hasn't done anything in the game, been no threat than the guy that's got the ball a couple of times and had a shot, maybe had a few too many. Yeah. Touches, but mm-hmm. You're sitting there at half time going, Jesus was the biggest threat. You know, Havertz won a few flick ons, but didn't really get a shooting yeah. chance. And Saka, listen, for me, yesterday, a lot of people going, yeah, he's injured. But Arteta said after the game, he wasn't. It was fatigue. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, he's tired from doing a lot of running. I, I was more worried about Saka's performance than Jesus. Jesus is not a natural left winger. If Martinelli was fit, he would have played. And he went out there to do a job defensively, he helped out. Going forward, he wasn't. Yeah, he should have let that shot off quicker. He's tried to do a bit of magic. It didn't work. Sometimes you just got to hit it through the crowd and deflection, it goes in. And he's not the answer. He's not the answer, I think. You know, he was a stopgap. Yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. didn't want to play Trossard and um, mm-hmm. Martinelli wasn't fit. So he didn't have a great game, Jesus. But no, no, no. I no. think None the, of them whole, did. The, whole, the whole attack was just. If I had to rank the four. Best, best to worst in terms of the attack yesterday, it probably would be the order you said. Jesus Havertz, Odegaard. Nah, in, okay, in an attacking sense, Jesus Havertz. So after, I don't know, bro. 
because Havertz, his flick ons, older guy. There's a couple of moments older guard, his passing let him down. I mean, the first half, yeah. second half, he had a couple. Even before the Jesus chance, he should have really, you know, no look pass, easy outside of the boot, inside would have probably ended up with a goal. Saka was definitely the worst of the lot. And I'm just hoping that, you know, obviously there's been a lot of noise, conversations, world class. You know, we've had a couple of big games since then. I hope that's not getting to it, like Porto and and mm -hmm. now this one. He hasn't looked his you. He hasn't had the same impact with, with you know, you usually expect. I'm just hoping Bayern Munich comes and then he 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 chooses that one to to start lighting it up again because we need we we need him. I mean, you know, me yeah. and you talked about the potential that he gets 18 to 20 this season. Yeah. You know, nine games to go. He's what seven goals away from it. And you know, we were both expecting that he he's probably gonna be our top scorer from now to the end of the season. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just, maybe I'm looking into it too much, but Maybe he comes and bangs against Luton and the, the rest yeah. is history. I don't know. See, Saka, Saka needs to make sure a narrative doesn't start because at the back end of last season, when we was fading as a team, you know, yeah. Saka faded as well. Do you know what I mean? Missed the penalty against West Ham and then it kind of, his form dipped with a number of others as well. It wasn't just him. But then... I always think the top players will kick into gear at the back end of the season. I was saying this today. I was like, Salah comes back into the Liverpool team yesterday. I actually don't think he played very well, but he scored the winning goal. Yeah. And I, I think he got the assist for the first goal. And I'm like, in them last nine games for Liverpool, you can guarantee Salah will score big goals. He'll score equalisers. He'll score winning goals. We need Saka to kick into gear now and... I'm hoping because we got Luton on Wednesday that we can beat them comfortably and a home game and just relieve the shackles a bit because don't get it twisted. We was under huge pressure yesterday. Yeah. We lose that game yesterday. Yeah, mathematically we're still in the title race, but we are we're the third favourites. We're hanging on. You know what I mean? One more slip up and you're basically done. So yeah. I'm just hoping we played within ourselves a bit yesterday and it's kind of like, okay. You've ticked that one off. That's your hardest game. Now you play loot and hopefully get a goal and then play him back into form. No more international break. But no. he looks injured at the end of every game. It's like every time I see Saka, I'm like, he's limping off. Is he injured? I don't know. And then he's not injured. So I don't know. I mean, people saying yeah. it in the chat, is he burnt out? you got to be careful, aren't you? Because, you know, Jack Wilshaw, we burnt him out. He obviously had injury problems. His body wasn't right for whatever reason. But I, I say it all the time, Saka's lack of competition, I think, is damaging to him. I think they need a right winger that's going to push him and keep him on his toes. And if you've got a big game, rest him. Because the manager don't trust Nelson. It, no. You know what I mean? If we're playing Luton on Wednesday and Saka, yo, you look a bit tired, bro, playing Nelson. He's not going to do that. So... Mm -hmm. You need to get a a winger in the summer and and rotate him. Nelson wasn't even in the squad yesterday. That's a good. No, he wasn't, was he? No, he oh. was the one, the obvious, uh, the name that was left, left out. out. Oh yeah, a new contract, yeah. and already he's not making yeah. squad. That is something that we need to sort out. But yeah, Saka. I mean, hopefully Luton is the game. I mean, this help. Yeah. When people say tired and burnt out, I just think what after after a two week break, I just think it yeah. doesn't sound it doesn't sound right to me. I I put mm. it more down to a poor performance. I think I think this leads us into saying City done well as well. Like we, you know, in terms of plaudits from the match, Arsenal are getting a lot more of the plaudits, and rightly so because it's away from home and against the City side that they're the best team in the world. But City also made it so difficult. I mean, I expected to have 10, 15 minutes in that game at the very least. I, before the game, I expected to at least have 20, 30 minutes in that game across the 90 minutes where yeah. we had apply, we'd apply some pressure. Then the game started and 20 minutes in, the way City were moving, I said, we'll do good to get 15 minutes out of this game. <laughs> in, in the end... Bro, Man halved had, it real quick. Well, we probably had five minutes in the end. That was the, 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 the quick... Well, I'm, I'm a lion in the attacking sense there. Yeah. If you accumulate all of our chances... Right, it was a five-minute span where it was like, all right, you know, it, it, we might do something. Bro, if, I can't lie yet. I, like, when I was reviewing the game today, I'm looking at the stats here. I'm thinking, if you didn't know... If you didn't show the badges yet, you'd be like, bro, was that Man City against 
Burnley or something. Like twenty seven percent possession, bro. Like we suffered yesterday. Listen, Man City are are unreal. I was watching them at times yesterday. I was thinking we can't get the ball off them, and yeah. and when we get the ball, we're losing it within two passes. Like they are, they are different level, but. That's why I think the result was so good because when you dominate the ball that much and you only have one shot on target, it's, it shows how difficult we made it for them once they got to the edge of the penalty area. And like you said, if that was the first leg of the semi-final and then you know, the, you're know you at the Emirates, you'd think, oh, maybe we can do them at the Emirates now after that. So yeah, they're, they're a top team. I still think they're the best team in the Prem. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean they win the league because if their level's not there, they might not get there. But um, yeah, they're, they're another level up. But I think we... I said yesterday, Arsenal need, in my opinion, that Alexis Sanchez, that Van Persie, yeah. however that looks in the summer. I think we need that player that just, like, people are scared. Like, keep him off the ball. Do you know what I mean? As much as we're all praising Gabriel for what he did to Haaland, we all knew like, yo, don't let that guy get yeah. a good chance because he's yeah. that good. And I think we we need that Alexis kind of player. I, I, this is a perfect time to say fucking Mbappe as well, man. Ah, oh. um, <laughs> bro, we, we ain't spoken uh, since that video. I think we ain't oh, spoken since that fucking video, no, bro. Man. bro. <laughs> you know the worst thing yesterday. I turn on the game. They were playing Marseille, weren't they? Bamiang was playing and Bappe was playing. Yeah, yeah. It's hammering down with rain. And I'm thinking, yo, it's not bad weather outside. Right? What's this guy talking about, <laughs> the weather in London, bro? Trust We've got better me. weather than you. And he got dragged after 60 minutes as well. He was vexed. Yeah. But, and yeah. I think Ramos scored when he came on as well. He did. But he's going Madrid, isn't he? So, you know, he yeah, was trying to be nice to us. Yeah, yeah and laughed, you know, yeah. and laughed. I got added in that a few times. Um, yeah. people, in the, people in the chat saying Liao. I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. You know, mm. I just, I'm just leaving Mikel to it, bro. I can't even lie to you. You know, yeah. Like last night, what I'm not saying last night was, you know, the best thing I've ever witnessed, or I'm not getting carried away with it. But I think Mikel is a top, top coach, um, coach on the cusp of being special. If we win a major trophy this season, special. Especially oh, yeah, with... yeah. I agree. Bro, like, it's crazy. Like, yesterday I was satisfied at the end of it, or, or 10 minutes after the end, because I was thinking to myself, when was the last time we were real, like, dogged like that, you know? When, yeah. when was the last... I used to, you know, after the, the, the glory days of Arsenal, the next period was heavy Jose Mourinho and that style of football. And then after the, the initial Jose period, then you had the Simeone and... In, in La Liga and in the Champions League. And I'd watch these teams, you know, gritty, dogged, they'd fight it out. Maybe not the best of quality, man mm. for man, but the heart made up for it. The passion, the desire, the commitment to, to, to the manage, manager's words and so on made up for it. I can't lie, Arteta's got so far shown a great mix because even if we go all the way back to him coming in, he worked with a 3-5-2. He worked, you know, with a back five to win the FA Cup. Then he switched it up a bit. Switched up again from a 4-2-3-1, I think it was, to a 4-3-3. Three, three. Me memory might, you know, not serve me correct. But it was a few formations before we finally started seeing this one, like, two years ago. Yeah. And now, t yesterday, I can't lie, I'm, I welcome that sort of performance when needed. Yeah. When yeah. we need to do that, go fucking do it. You know, I don't really give a shit. Yeah. I, I, think, I think you're bang on because... It's all right beating a team 5-0 at home when everything clicks and, you know, you've got 70% possession. But to go, I haven't seen Arsenal defend like that before. And even yeah. though we've had the best defence this season, I've always been like, mm, let's see if that works at the Etihad, though. Do you know what I mean? Because they're just different. And I'll be honest, like, I thought the game wasn't great yesterday as a spectacle, but I was never really like... Oh my God, they're gonna score! I, I never, even though they dominated the ball, we was never on the ropes. We no. weren't like you know making no. saves and it's hit the bar. And I was like, oh my, set pieces really. Ake and Harlan's yeah. chances were both set pieces. That was it. Yeah, yeah, both corners. So mm -hmm. as you just said with Arteta there, and I always like to talk about him because, as I always say, you know, I, I've I've been a big critic of him, but he he does deserve huge credit because. 
I think he's coming of age as a coach and he's showing yeah. adaptability and he's showing that he's learning from past mistakes, you know, of last season, I think really hurt the club. Even though it was a great season in terms of we didn't expect to be in a title race, that burns you as a football club when you get that close. They would have been on holiday in the summer thinking, how have I not got a championship medal around my neck? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, and like you said, he's he's a major trophy away from going into yeah, yeah. that bracket where you say you're one of the best managers around. You yeah. know, because if he wins the Premier League at Arsenal, I think it's it's absolutely unbelievable. And if mm -hmm. he wins the Champions League, it's it's incredible. Like you just don't want him to be that manager where you say you've got so much ability, but you're sitting here in 2026 and going, it's still only one FA Cup because people will go for all the excitement and all the quality you you haven't got over the line. So I really hope he does win a major trophy with us for all the criticism I've given him because I just think he really cares about the club. And, you know, yeah. he cared as a player. He's improved as a manager. You don't want to have to start mm -hmm. again. We're so far into the process now. You just want it to work rather than, having to reload and come again. So I, I hope we get over the line. Man. Yeah, because when I say this Arsenal team is going to get over the line, I mean, I mean, Mikel being a part of that because yeah, it's not like we're filled with a team with abundance of, like, I don't know how to say it because I don't want to be disrespectful now, but it's, it's that this has come out of nowhere. The signings that he made have been shrewd. It's not players that are, you know, apart from maybe a Thomas Partey, Declan Rice. Yeah. I don't think you can say any other player is a player that, you know, was heavily sought after, was heavily rated prior to signing for us. I think every other player yeah. from Ramsdale, Ben White, Gabriel, Jesus, Zinchenko, Raya, all of these. So to get to where we've got to and the quality we're showing, the manager, you know, has to, he's played a heavy part in that, you know, to, to, to maybe narrow that gap in quality. Because on paper, not just quality, but experience as well, we lack to Liverpool and City. Yeah, for the last two years we've been up there with it. Arteta's going to get over the line with whether he does it at Arsenal or not. I think he's done enough and shown enough now that, regardless of what happens with Arsenal and and you know if we win majors, I hope he continues and continues to win majors and majors and 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 you know um, it doesn't dry up like the Wenger period did. But yeah. I think Arteta's shown enough that big clubs would be interested if there was ever doubt about his position. And I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think big clubs could clamour for the signature if there was ever doubts about his position. I know Barcelona have that hope that he'd probably go there one day because he's from the academy or whatnot. Yeah, PSG obviously PSG been linked because he's been there. Play. I think as well what what I do right now is you hear when you hear other clubs, it's almost like the Arteta thing is the blueprint now. You know, Chelsea, yeah. Man United, they're all. Well, Chelsea obviously went crazy with the money, but okay. everyone references the Arteta thing now. He came in, young manager. Everybody wants that young manager that mm -hmm. plays good football. No one's looking at Conte's and Mourinho's now. They're looking for Xabi Alonso. They're looking for, you know, Arteta's and these younger guys with the fresh style of football that have got energy. And it's a yeah. young man's game now. You know, management, yeah. look at Klopp. You know, he's it takes it out of you. So they want these young coaches now so just it, just hope he gets that trophy man it's because even the, the the way them like look a lot of, yeah you're right a lot of teams and fans now talk about you know trusting and you know being patient i can't lie to you that i want to say there is luck involved in it too but mm. this doesn't just happen every day like, you know you don't you don't just get an ex player that's assistant to a great coach and he comes in and he hits like i i, I always use carlos Quiroz as an example yeah. You know, under under um, Alex Ferguson, uh, you know, great things were said. When he went off, you know, to fly himself, it didn't quite work out for him like he probably would have hoped. Um, yeah. So it doesn't always work out. So other teams looking at him thinking that's the way to do it. I, I get, you know what? Chopping and changing managers has ruined the manager market as well because when I was growing up, it was only Real, that Real Madrid that really done it like that that chopped mm. and changed managers pretty consistently. And even that was, you know, not as much as Chelsea have recently. Yeah. But you could afford one team doing it. And I think when Chelsea started doing it, you could afford maybe a couple of teams doing that. But United do it, Chelsea do it, Tottenham do it. In Italy, a few clubs have done it over. 
no managers have really had enough chance and by that managers i mean the new generation of managers to really show themselves at one club because yeah even the expectations they don't live up to early and the pressure is too much so the, the board see them out or they take the wrong step at the wrong time and you know i think villa boas is a good example of that high hopes big yeah. step, maybe too early you never hear from him again so I think, you know, the chopping and changing of managers has cost that market as well. The players, we know. We spoke about the player market already. Yeah. Dwindling, but no, I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. And it, and it's a lot of it does come from Chelsea because what, the thing is, yeah, when a good manager goes to a club and he fails for whatever reason, you kind of write them off a little bit. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. look at Conte. Before Conte went to Tottenham, you know, a lot of fans would have been like, yo, I'll take yeah. Conte, bro. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. won and he's won so much. He goes to Tottenham, it's a nightmare. People are looking at him now like, nah, I wouldn't really want him. And that's, that's just like that. one job. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So that market is and that and that is the fear factor with if Arteta went. It's like, where's the solution? Like, you know, and and could the you can get a good manager, but if the ownership doesn't work properly and give him what he wants. It's not going to work. You know, I've said yeah, yeah. before, like Zidane, I, I think Zidane is a very good manager, even though people say only did it at Madrid. But you can't bring Zidane in unless you're going to back him heavily in the market. He can't, he's not a project manager who's going to build something off the floor. So I think, I think they have created the blueprint of how to get a young manager. And like you said, you know, McLaren at Man United. But David Beckham said in his book that McLaren was the best coach he'd ever mm -hmm. worked with. Apparently, he was an unbelievable coach. Man mm -hmm. went into management. He was putting on a Dutch accent, you know, That's Wally and the Broly. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy was a disaster, you know. Um, Paul Clement, who was with Ancelotti as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, a lot of these guys have failed, man. So um, it doesn't happen often that you get an assistant manager who becomes a, a really good manager. So, yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah. good luck to everyone out there, man, because I'm not saying yeah. this is the way to follow. You know, that's not what I'm saying. Let me look at the super chats. 42 minutes in. How many have we got? 1.4K in the building. Hit the like button first and foremost, people. Let's get the likes up to a thousand. We've got 1.4K here. It should be close enough. And obviously, show some love to Curtis as well. Channel link in the description. Both on the road to 100K 2024. Let's make it happen, people. Um Graham's asking, is Gabriel the better centre back? It depends what you want, in my opinion, Graham. If you, you know, they're completely different types of centre back. So if you want one type, then you're going to pick a Gabriel. If you want the other type of Saliba, um, I don't. Is Gabriel the better centre back? From what I grew up knowing of a centre back, yes, would be the answer. But modern day meaning of centre back, Saliba would probably be the answer. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I, I would argue maybe that Gabriel might have been better than him this season, if you look at overall, with the goals he scored as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, defensively as well, I'd say. Yeah. 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 But I think in the modern game, like you said, possession-based, if you was to sell those two players, mm -hmm. I think Saliba would have more clubs in for him because because of the style of football. But I, I, it's just great that we've got two quality ones, you know. That's, that's a nice thing. He's the better footballer. That's how I'd probably put it. Better centre back, Gabriel. Better footballer, Saliba. Um, it says Saka was defending the whole game, so I can't judge him. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a bit of a cop out, though. You know. Yeah. You know, he's not the first person that's been asked to defend and also attack. So, yeah, can't really use that as an excuse. Um, big up Tevin, man. Hope you're good. Big up the G's. Yeah. We've often said that we would sacrifice attractiveness for effectiveness, and Arteta has managed to show signs of both. Rival fans can do one. We aren't here to entertain them, but win. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. The narratives around Arsenal is always funny because when Jose did it, legend, great. What a yeah. What, what a troll. What a see you next Tuesday. He loves it. He lo Arsenal do it once. Once we've done that sort of thing, Arsenal. Low block, dirty tactics, 10 men behind the ball. We've done it once and all of a sudden, fucking, it's, it's trending. Bro, the ops wanted us to go there, let the clip off and lose 4-1. That's what Trust they wanted. Me. Trust they me. Wanted, they wanted Easter Sunday entertainment. We can't do that, bro. We're not built like that yet. Give us another year. But, yo, go there and stink out the Etihad, man. I'm all Trust. for it. 
That, oh, yeah, trust me. It was a joy to watch. Big up, Mr. <laughs> BP. Turkish, would you say Hugh is guilty of doing what he said we done by not taking the FA Cup game last season against them seriously? Brackets, Community Shield. In his case, and now they failed to be at us or they failed to beat us in the league. Oh, so you're saying them potentially not taking Community Shield seriously with us winning it in the end maybe was the start of the belief that we can go into mm. the season and Potentially, but did they did they not take Community Shield serious? I remember Haaland. Did Haaland Haaland started? The brain didn't, but the brain did come on. Haaland come off, or vice versa. Aside from that, I think they played a pretty strong team. No, they did. They had a good team, and I remember Pep. Pep was celebrating, man, when it was. I yes. think Cole Palmer scored, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And Pep was going mad. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not even giving them that excuse. I think it was a big boost for us beating them, even yeah. in that game. And even that, it was a 1-1 one -one after 90. So, really, we beat yeah. them on penalties. But I think yeah. the true belief came after the 1-0. Now, yeah. this is an away performance. 0-0, gritty, dogged. So, all round that we're primed to make that next step next season, which is be a bit more expansive, play more of our game than, you know, worry about their game and see how we fare then. Yeah. Um, Liverpool fan Andy says, um, wanted a draw or a City win. Arsenal are the main threat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liverpool winners of the weekend for sure. Gonorola says, we need to stop listening to salty rivals. A solid defence is the bedrock of champions. Um, if we put in two similar away Champions League performances, we win the Champions League. Yeah, I guess if you're saying if we put in a way performance like that in Munich and then like that in Madrid or Etihad, the likelihood of us getting to the final would be a, a lot higher. Yeah, yeah, we'd need another away one. Wembley's away. We'd need another one in the in, in the final. But yeah, um, I get that. Champions League, I'm not getting carried away yet, though, because yeah. yeah. Bayern Munich is still a hefty task. Jay says, big up, guys. Not sure if you've spoken about this. But why are Sky asking Thomas Frank about the game? Why are Sky asking Thomas Frank about the game? He responded with boring. Always us that get it. What, they asked Thomas Frank about the City-Arsenal game? I didn't I even know. know that. Even Jay, but even if he said boring, like, so what? If it was boring, it was boring. Like, I, think it was, I think the game was boring in a neutral standpoint. Obviously, I was invested and stressed out because I love Arsenal, but... It wasn't a game where, you know, it was filled with excitement. So if someone labelled it boring, it is it is what it is. I don't mm. really mind Thomas Frank too much. No. Um, but, but why are they asking him? That, that's probably the, the best question of the lot. O'Malley says, can we not give City credit for their defending? They were all on us. Won almost all the second balls. I mentioned it at one point. I mentioned yeah. it at one point. Um, but we're so used to Pep's teams being like that, like not, not yeah. wanting, you know, being, being away from the ball for longer than 10, 15 seconds. Um, Jerome says, can we just enjoy that we have Gabriel and Saliba? Let's be thankful and stop trying to compare them. Big up, gents. Come on, you gunners. Big up, bro. It's a natural thing, isn't it? I think everyone does that, man, compares. It's natural. It is new school, though. It is, because back in the day, I never used to be like, so Campbell or Adams. Adam yeah, Campbell. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a social media thing, yeah. It yeah. is, yeah, yeah. Um, Golden Nelly says, what does ZY stand for? Saturn, that in, eight, in seven weeks, we could eventually, I, I'm going to put mad that in seven weeks, we could eventually win the Prem. <laughs> And do you think that Luton can do the same as Southampton or are we ready for it this time? Bro, I ain't trying to yeah, hear about yeah. Southampton this season. Yeah. Nah. Luton had their, they had their scare against us in the away leg. Like, yeah. This one just, just pummeled nice them. Man. Easy. Yeah. Three, four goals. You should keep the clean sheet. Oh, I think he was saying crazy, people are saying, but maybe the first. Crazy, few. mad. Yeah, yeah, good enough. Good enough. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I knew what you was doing anyway. Yeah, made sense. Made sense. <laughs> we got going early though, and yeah, I think we're ready, man. Okay, we're def we def we definitely feel, or it definitely feels like we're we're a lot more ready heading into this stage than we was last season. Oh, definitely. Because last year we were losing players like Saliba was injured, Holding was in the team. You know, Jesus was coming back from the knee injury. Now. I'm looking going, boy, part A, as Wenger used to say, you know, like a new signing, you know, part A could be back. Timber, you know, I don't know if Timber's going to play much of a part, but 
I looked up Potter yesterday, even though a couple of times, you know, he struggled. He switched off on a corner for Haaland when he missed. And um, there was one time he was chasing De Bruyne. I thought he was running in treacle, but he couldn't move. <laughs> but, but that yeah, pass yeah. that he played into Odegaard, and then oh, yeah, Odegaard yeah, yeah. plays it to Trossard. Trossard should have passed it. He's the one in midfield to me. You can tell he played for Simeone. He played Top in the league. Shoulder, yeah, yeah, he's just comfy on the ball. He's got that power to just hold someone off. I still think Partey's got a, a role to play here, man, before maybe he moves on in the summer. Maybe he doesn't. I think you get him in the team, get Martinelli back fit. Got a different, different outlook to us. Yeah, hundred percent. That is all the super chats. Um, I will get any more comments in that we need to get in. But to be honest, we've talked enough about it. Is there anything else that we've missed the last two weeks? I mean, the international break was nothing, was it? It was. Oh fuck all that. Nah, it's garbage. But we, answer look, me we're something, man. Gonna... Answer me something. What? what, what I, can't, I, I, I do. I understand what's going on. I don't really understand what's going on. Ah, right, we we've talked hip hop before, so it's not really. <laughs> It's not really off subject, off subject. But what what is like? What's going on with Diddy? Like, what's he being charged for? Like, what's the boy? <laughs> boy, you know what? No, I've yeah, seen it's raids. Not... Yeah, but I haven't seen why. Like, I've seen raids, and I've seen that fifties baby mum. Yeah, has been called a sex worker or something. But what what like, what is going on though? Like, what is it? I don't understand, bro. I, I like. Because cause the thing that's mad, they haven't arrested him, have they? I see him videos of him walking in front of his house. I don't get it. Like, what is the what is the charge? What is the... Because the internet can run away with shit. So I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to get carried away with what the internet are saying because they can just... Like, I know he's done something because getting raided like that means you've done something. Yeah. But usually that means... Well, I'm not an expert in American law and all this, but usually that means like drugs or... Or guns, or well, not even guns too much in America, but usually I don't know what it means that sort of a raid. I think obviously there's there's accusations of things and people oh. saying trafficking and stuff. Okay. So they've obviously got a warrant to raid the house, take I think they took his computers and all kind of things, but I don't think they've got enough to arrest him at the moment. So I think they've just got a warrant to take things. And then obviously they'll go through his computers and all that stuff so it's probably a waiting game for him man he's he knows something's around the corner for him and did you see the thing they reckon he had cameras in every room in his house I and swear. obviously he throws these wild parties in it where you know all yeah, the yeah, celeb yeah. no i know so he's, he's a wrong one he's a wrong you know sure. he's a wrong we, but we, imagine we. how many people bro might get if he gets done imagine how many people can get taken down in that if this guy had cameras imagine the madness that was going on in that house with celebrities and that. So it's another, it's a hip-hop Epstein, basically. This is what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could, yeah. It, it could, it could be that. He's a wrong and it's sad because, it's sad because, you know, for like the culture of hip-hop and the streets and things like, you're like, bro, like Diddy and, and you know, he was a big part of hip-hop because he was with Biggie and, you know, bro, growing up, R. Kelly and that, he was like one of the kings of yeah, R&B. Yeah. And these guys are just, you're like, raw, man used to respect what you guys were doing. And now you, it's not like you're getting locked up for regular street stuff that we're used to. It's like, it's weird stuff, man. So it's pretty yeah. bold. It's, you know what? It's true. All the things that you'd, this kind of shit you'd think Young Fog would get shift for. But instead, Young Fog's getting shift for what the, the these men in the 90s were, yeah. what you'd think they was, what's going yeah. on? What is oh. going on, bro? Because you're right. Like, I link it to bear. I'm just glad the locks and them man haven't been dragged into oh, this yeah. because, yeah, I'm just glad that hasn't happened because I'm even I'm even seeing Biggie get get getting I've seen that getting quoted and lyrics being put up on all of that now. So, fifties a troll though. I just see Dave say fifties on to all of them. Fifties a troll, and I see his baby mum was vex or upset about something. Um, He's been hammering her, hasn't he? Like in the comments, um, yeah. I think Diddy was paying her one or something. Yeah, she. Well, I think she was. Her, she was named in this whatever this yeah. document is. That this is why I don't get it. There's a document out saying something. Yeah. But anytime I ask someone what it's saying, no one knows. Well, they only say this, this sex workers. And I don't even know what that really like. 
what what do you mean that sex yeah. work? What do you mean? What's he doing with them? Like, I know I'm I know we're seeing trafficking a lot in the in the comment section, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It. it's running Fish. wild. Yeah, like I, yeah, but it's not good for hip hop. And like you said, the R. Kelly thing already, like you know, R and B was such a big thing in, in in that era, and his mm. name was was at the forefront of it all. Diddy not as big in hip hop, I'd say, because hip hop yeah. I think was wider and had a lot more people to it that you could attribute the the name to. But it was a big part of it, a very big part of it. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I never really listened to Diddy's music like that, like not an album. Like he obviously featured on a lot of hits, but it's just like and and like man saying in the comments, like I'm seeing man say, "Oh, Jay Z." Like I don't know if he's seeing what fifty think, fifty mm. fifty's been talking about Diddy and Jay Z for years, and I thought this is just fifty playing around. He's a troll, but then now you know Diddy's gone and Jay Z ain't saying nothing and. They're making accusations that Beyonce, have you seen these things they're saying Beyonce is addicted to drugs, apparently? They're saying that now. And I mean, I'm not saying that's Jay Z's fault, but yo, yeah, yeah. like, this could be a whole. Nah, they can't bring Jay Z into it as well, though. Bro, they're gonna, you're, you're gonna have to remove yourself from that video, bro. Forever <laughs> young, you know, he was Rosie. telling us all along. <laughs> <Rosie>. <laughs> Yo, you're gonna have to remove that part. Of no, the I see the, I see the J. Bro, I've been seeing Jay Z's name in it as well. This is why I'm asking because there's so much layers to it now that I can't even be bothered to investigate because I'm seeing so much conspiracy theories here. <laughs> Bro, I, I don't, I don't get it. I just, don't, bro, the bro they, is... they, they're gonna raid AFTV offices, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, how did uh, they get you in the video? That's what they're gonna want to. <laughs> gonna have a recall case or something. Like that. <laughs> oh my days, that's a bad. Um... Yeah, oh. look, yes, man says he keeps hearing Jay Z's name as well for some reason. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Someone said blame Cat Williams. Hey. But what I Cat Williams... They know. They yeah. know, man. Yeah, what Cat Williams said in that interview is not like... It's not things that haven't been said before. It's, yeah. It's just that it's come from Cat Williams, who's quite loved and respected and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, so, so man, man, I'm saying I'm in a Jay-Z. I'm not in no videos, man. Don't listen to Curtis, man. Bro, he's in Look. there, mate. Forever Look Young video. Look alike. <laughs> Look alike. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh. that, was, that was Irish London, bro. You don't know, man. I <laughs> said that was Irish London. <laughs> Eros says, "Can't stop, won't stop." All right, on that note, on that note, listen, we've, we've we're touching up an hour in about two minutes. One point five k conversation done. I just wanted to see, you know, what what Curtis thought about this whole stuff because I, I yeah, I'm clueless about it all, and I don't really like the way social media runs away with things. Yeah. I'd rather know something when there's something worth knowing rather than follow the trail and pick up all the shit that comes with it. Um, but yeah, Curtis, what are you doing for the rest of the week? You've obviously got to watch along Lou and you live tomorrow again. Yeah. 2 PM tomorrow, press conference reaction and preview. And then yeah, watch along. Yeah. I think every midweek this month we're playing. So it's just going to be content galore, man. Yeah. This week, buying next week, the week after. Yeah, we do. Bayern Actually, again. yeah, Bayern again, and yeah. then Chelsea's midweek. That was the Chelsea rearrangement Thursday, isn't it? I think something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's some... People, make sure you subscribe. Curtis's channel link in the description. So go show him some love as well. He's he's definitely a lot more consistent than I am on this channel. Um, this shows on this channel. Make sure you subscribe. Go subscribe to Curtis. Show him some love. Um, and yeah, we'll be back after the next couple of games. We'll come back after the Brighton game. Maybe a Sunday night one. Or a yeah, Sunday yeah. afternoon, you know, we play Saturday. Do we play Saturday? Saturday, 5.30, yeah. So we could do Sunday night, maybe. Sunday night, maybe early, whatever suits you. We'll all sort out. People will be back Sunday, so make sure you're there. Love for the love, as always. Hit the like button on the way out. Peace.